right this one here is uh, called planting a seed can bloom into a beautiful flower um, this is uh, a testimony mixed with uh, a couple of bi uh, Bible verses that go perfect with it so I uh, hope you guys enjoy first let's go to John chapter 1 verse 4 through 5 again that's John chapter 1 verse 4 through 5 in him was life and the life was the light of men and the light shines in darkness and the darkness did not comprehend it this is the intro here something as small as an honest hello with a smile from ear to ear can make someone's day a hug that when you give it the person does not want to let go a helping hand when needed with no intention of being paid back showing patience on those who have no knowledge about the true meaning of sin showing love through food or clothing even though they talk about you do you have any idea what you're doing by showing that Jesus lives in you do you you see your voice is the Word of God that is a seed that is being planted in crap that represents us living in sin whether it's stealing, lying, committing adultery, because let's face it, a sin is a sin, and we all have sin. But out of that sin can bloom a beautiful flower that has emerged from the smell of death, that has been entwined with chains, even though they have walked through darkness most of their lives. With its stem pushing towards the sky, spreading its petals towards the heavens, as when we pray with our arms, worshiping Him for His glory. God can see a leader like Moses leading his people out of Egypt or someone having a heart, a big heart like when David versed Goliath. So don't look at the sin. Look at the rising potential. Romans, let's go to Romans chapter 2 verse 1. Therefore you are inexcusable, O men, whoever you are who judge. For in whatever you judge another, you condemn yourself. For who you judge, practice the same things now let's go to matthew chapter 7 verse 1 through 6 again that's matthew chapter 7 verse 1 through 6 judge not that you be not judged for with what judgment you judge you will be judged and with what measure you use it will be measured back to you and why do you look at the speck of your brother's eye but do not consider the plank in your own eye or how can you say to your brother, let me remove the speck from your eye and look, a plank is in your own eye. Hypocrite. First remove the plank from your own eye and then you will see clearly to remove the speck from your brother's eye. I was at the supermarket and uh, I was in the bakery section and I noticed a young man uh, that is an employee there and we started to talk and talk and even though he used a curse word in almost every sentence, I seen him past his sin, but a pain in his eyes that was looking for a way out like the people in Egypt that were going through slavery. So I asked him, do you go to church or, you know, would, would like to come to church and check it out? You never know what God has for you. And his response, I have bad experiences in churches and I don't believe in it or God. But that's when I hit him with my testimony of my heart murmur and how God, God cured my heart. And he started to tear up and said, oh, I have a heart murmur too. And I could feel the presence of God tugging at his heart saying, I'm here. But you see how I planted uh, the word of God, the seed in sin and immediately through his tears. It's like God watering that seed and one day it blooming into a beautiful flower even though it was surrounded by darkness but then you shall see God's glory shine upon him as he has done with me so everyone just keep planting seeds because you never know if a leader lies within that sin if you truly have love in your heart if you really have God in you you will not be judging mistreating or talking about the sinner hate the sin but not the sinner Remember that at once in our lifetime, we have sinned as they have sinned. We sometimes look at sinners as if there's no hope or, or if they're from another planet. And don't we usually hear a lot of people say this? Oh, don't get next to him or she. They're going to hell for their sins. 
That's not Jesus in you, but the enemy himself. The enemy hates, deceives, and is out to destroy. Why are you destroying the hope of sinners? How much more are you worth than them that say you have Christ in you, but promote hate? It says in the scriptures in the book of 1 John 9, If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. For the people that think that you have no hope, there is hope through Jesus Christ's blood. We just have to accept him as the son of God and our savior in our life. So um, I hope you enjoyed it. Um, remember, if anyone were to say, oh, you're going to hell for your sins. No, just tell them, hey, these verses say different. And there's a lot of verses. And I have another message called the power of Jesus blood. That's going to get more into it. So I um, hope you guys enjoyed. That one will be up very soon. Um, take care and God bless you. And keep moving forward.